Okay, let's face it. Philosophers are confusing with their big words and their ethical debates. Who knows what they're talking about? And none are more confusing than a British guy by the name of John Locke. His speciality was politics. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I know. That sounds confusing and boring. But like most things that are confusing and boring, what he had to say was actually very important. His theory of politics had three parts. Natural rights, consent of the people, and a moral obligation to rebel. You heard me right. Moral obligation to rebel. Excited yet? So the first part centers around the idea that when God created man, he endowed each of us with certain rights. Among these rights are life, liberty, and property, and they're very important. They're known as natural rights, rights that were naturally given. As long as you exist, you get these rights. They should never be denied to anybody. They should never be taken away by anybody. They're for keepsies. The right to life is the right to live and live whatever life you want as long as it doesn't infringe on the right to life of others. That means you can dye your hair pink and listen to rock music all day. You can have a cat or two or whatever and anything in between, just as long as you don't take any life away from anybody else. Sorry, Jason Voorhees. The right to liberty means no one has the right to imprison you against your will, unless you're sent to jail for being naughty. That means the world is your playground. You can explore nature and Europe and wherever you want, but if you break the law, your right to freedom is taken away and you go to jail. Pretty fair. Now the right to property seems a little out of place in this list, but really the right to property is a combination of the right to life and liberty. What? Okay, I'll break it down. Bear with me. In this state of nature, men are free to do as they please, so long as they preserve peace and preserve mankind in general. Because they have the right to self-preservation, it follows that they have the right to those things that will help them to survive and be happy. God has provided us with all these materials we need to pursue those things, but these natural resources are useless unless men applies their efforts to them. We own our bodies, therefore anything we acquire as a result of physical labor of our bodies becomes our property. So what does that look like? If I need shelter to live and I work to cut down a bunch of trees, the house I built is mine. If I need corn to live and I plow soil and plant seeds, the corn that grows will be mine. If I need protein to live and I raise chickens and I love them every day, the eggs they produce will be mine. Our work is an extension of ourselves and therefore just as important as our rights to life and liberty. Now because everyone has the same rights, John Locke believed that made everyone equal. That meant no man had a higher status, was more valuable, or had more rights than anybody else. I'm pretty sure everybody loved that idea. So where does government fit into all this? Well, according to John Locke, government power is the natural power of each man collectively giving up into the hands of a designated body forming a compact or agreement. Wait, what? I thought we could never and should never give up our natural rights, ever. You're right. But there is one time it's acceptable to relinquish a few rights. Our rights are really important, but we're just one person. There are a lot of bad guys out there that don't always follow moral laws of nature and might try to take away our rights. We need a hero to protect those rights. A government hero. Government forms when a bunch of people give a smaller group of people, whom they elect, access to their rights. And then a government is born. Aww. The citizens enter a compact with the government. Citizens give the government some of their rights. In exchange, the government protects their rights when they're under attack and act in ways that best serve the people. The government exists because the people allow it to. But what happens when the government becomes evil? <laughs> what if a government tries to take away one of our natural rights? What if it denies us the right to life? What if it doesn't allow us to be free and explore and find new ways to be happy? No! What if, what if they take away our right to property? That's 
to worry, John Locke believes that the community has a moral obligation to revolt against or otherwise replace any government that forgets that it exists only for the people's benefit. That means, out with the old, in with the new, start from scratch with a better government. Why would he say something that extreme, that we should get rid of an entire government? Natural rights are that important, according to John Locke, and maybe some colonists.